As an RPG, Elden Ring's gameplay is very much influenced by the type of character that each player decides to make. Players can make very different characters that can do very different things thanks to the allocation of skill points in the different stats that the game gives us. Every stat does something different and there are many mechanics that are tied to these main attributes. That being said, no matter what stat we talk about, there are some basic concepts that apply to every single one. Knowing these concepts will help you understand how all the stats work and it will allow you to be better at making builds. We will be talking about the soft cap and the hard cap of skills. We will go over the concepts of min-maxing and diminishing returns. And of course, we will establish the importance and the difference between primary stats, secondary stats, and essential stats. In order to organize everything, I will be creating timestamps in the description of this video to help you navigate the content and allow you to reach the information that interests you the most. In all honesty, a lot of this information might be common and you might already know it, but Elden Ring has brought in a lot of new players that might not be aware of these basic concepts. So, for them, let's get started. Every time that we level up, the game allows us to put one skill point into any of the main attributes that every character shares. Vigor, Mind, Endurance, Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane. While this is easy to understand, it is important to also be aware that not every skill point is the same. In fact, not all of the skill points that we put on a stat gives us the same effect or the same efficiency. Normally, you would think that the more we level up a stat, the more we get out of it. Unfortunately, things are not as straightforward. When we focus on a single stat, we get much more benefit from the 20th skill point than we do from the 90th skill point. This is called diminishing returns. In the English language, diminishing returns is defined as the proportionately smaller profit or benefit that is derived from something as more resources are invested into it. If we extrapolate this definition to Elden Ring, then the simple concept is that the higher a stat is, the less we get from each skill point invested. Every skill in the game has certain breakpoints where the player will start noticing that they get less benefit from their skill point investments. It is important to keep an eye out for this because, at that point, it might be worthwhile to make such an investment elsewhere. It is very important to be aware of this for those cases when we are making a very specific build and we have a limited number of skill points. To make this easier to understand, let's use myself as an example. One of my labor activities is to translate legal documents, usually from the Spanish language into the English language and vice versa. I can translate a total of 5 pages of legal documentation in 1 hour. This puts me at 12 minutes per page. I can do this for quite the period of time. 1 hour, 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours and then by the 5th hour, my mind starts getting slower. The languages start to get mixed up in my head. Words begin to escape me and my grammatical structures begin to fail me. My work product is getting worse. If during the first four hours I produce five pages of translations in one hour, then starting the fifth hour my production lowers to four pages per hour. By the sixth hour things get even worse and my production lowers to only two pages per hour. So on and so forth. As you can see, the longer I continuously translate, the worse my product will be. This is diminishing returns. It gets to a point that it is better to invest the 5th and 6th hour doing something different in order to rest and refresh my mind so that I can return to generating a product of 5 pages per hour. The same can be applied to Elden Ring. By the time you get strength to 80, it might be better to consider putting points somewhere else, because those points will give you more benefit than getting strength to 81. When speaking about diminishing returns, I mentioned that there were breakpoints where the player would begin to notice the benefits of a skill begin to lower. These breakpoints are called skill caps. There are two types of skill caps. There is the soft cap and there is the hard cap. 
Soft caps are the breakpoints in which investment into a stat begins to give less benefit per point than it used to at the beginning. Reaching the soft cap of a skill is, generally speaking, a good idea, because we know that up to the soft cap, we are getting the maximum benefit that we can from our investment. That being said, sometimes it is still a good idea to continue investing into a skill past the soft cap, because even if we are getting less benefit, it is still worthwhile to the investment we are making. Sometimes skills have multiple soft cap. There is the first soft cap where we begin to get less benefit from our investment, and then there is a second soft cap where we immediately notice that the diminishing returns are becoming a lot more aggressive. When making a build in Elden Ring, it is usually a good idea to hit the soft cap for your main attribute, and if the skill has multiple soft caps, it might even be worthwhile to hit the second one. Still, pay attention to the diminishing returns and be sure to stop when they get very aggressive. It is never a good idea to go past the final soft cap of a skill. And then we have the hard cap. This one is much easier to understand. The hard cap is the mechanical limitation that the game establishes for all stats. In other words, it is the maximum amount of points that we can put into a single stat. In Elden Ring, this value is 99. No stat can be increased past level 99 on any character. As a rule of thumb, it is never a good idea to get to the hard cap of any skill. By the time you reach these values, diminishing returns will hit you so hard that it will be better to put these points anywhere else. My dear viewer, you might be asking yourself, does all of this mean that it is bad to put a lot of skill points into a single stat? Does this mean that it is better to keep all stats at the same level? Absolutely not. It is good to have a few stats be really high, and it is not good to have each and every stat be the same level. That is not how making a build works. In fact, we need to find balance. This means finding exactly how many points we should put into every single stat to get the most benefit from our investment. This is called min-maxing, and it is described as the science of establishing how we can make the minimum amount of investment in order to get the maximum amount of benefit. This is what making a build is. We run the numbers, we try out different possibilities, and we figure out exactly how many points we need to put into each skill in order to make the build the most powerful it can possibly be. We look at weapons, armor pieces, upgrade paths, ashes of war, and try to meet their requirements, while also feeding into the proper scaling in order to draw out as much damage as we can. It is not really necessary to min-max a build in order to play the game. In fact, you can beat Elden Ring with almost anything, as long as you're having fun. That being said, if you want to reach top-tier efficiency, then min-maxing is absolutely necessary. Personally speaking, I enjoy min-maxing a lot. It is like a puzzle that I need to solve in order to unlock the build's full potential. The last thing I want to go over is the relationship that each stat has with every build you are making. When you sit down to think of a build, you need to start by defining what it is that you want to do. It could be anything, but you need to establish the goal. Is it a strength build? Is it an intelligent build? Is it a hybrid build of some sort? Once we think and establish what we want to do, then we will be able to know what the primary, secondary, and essential stats are for this build. The primary stat of a build is the most important stat. The whole build will be based on this stat, and this will determine what kind of weapons we will be able to use, and what kind of spells, if any, we will be able to take advantage of. The primary stats of the build is what makes the build work. The build depends on this stat. This is an objective measure. If you're making a strength build, then your primary stat is strength. There is no avoiding this. Otherwise, you wouldn't be making a strength build. The primary stat of any build needs to be able to make the build work by itself. 
For example, mind cannot be a primary stat in Elden Ring. You cannot make a mind build. This stat mostly controls how much FP we have. If you make mind your primary stat, then you will definitely have a lot of FP. But you would still need points in many other stats in order to reach weapon requirements, spell requirements, and in order to get more damage from scaling. Your primary stats needs to make the build work on its own. It needs to be able to provide both the damage and the requirements for equipment. The secondary stat of a build is the support stat. This is mostly applicable for hybrid builds. For example, a strength faith build. In this case, strength is the primary stat and faith is the secondary stat. What is the point of a secondary stat? Well, if the primary stat is the one that makes the build work, then the secondary stat is the one that covers the weaknesses of the primary. Continuing with the strength faith example, in this case, faith is the secondary stat because it helps us use incantations to increase the power of our strength stat. We get more defense, more attack, and even some additional scaling for certain specific weapons. Generally speaking, the secondary stat is always lower than the primary stat, and we only put as many points into it as we need to cover the weaknesses that the build has. If the secondary stat were to disappear, the build could still work. That said, the advantages that the secondary stat brings makes it very much worth the investment that we are making. When you are making a hybrid build, it is very common to have one primary stat and one secondary stat. Now, is it possible to have two primary stats? The answer is yes. It's not really that common, but it can happen. For example, a quality build is the kind of build that takes advantage of strength and dexterity scaling in equal parts. As a result, both strength and dexterity become primary stats, and they usually have the same amounts of points in a quality build. For example, 40-40 or 50-50. In Elden Ring, the same can happen in a Golden Order build, which is basically an Omnicaster, taking advantage of both sorceries and incantations. In this kind of build, both intelligence and faith are equally primary stats, so they would both be at a high investment. Again, probably 50 points in each stat. It's hard to make these builds with two primary stats because of how heavy the investment needs to be in order to make them good. That being said, it is definitely possible. Finally, let's talk about essential stats. Primary stats and secondary stats are objective. They are determined by the type of build you want to make and the type of weapons or spells that you want to use. There is no opinion on the matter. Strength for strength, intelligence for intelligence, so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to essential stats, there is quite a bit of subjectivity in the matter. Essential means that it is absolutely needed, but what is essential to me may not be as essential to you. For example, Vigor. For me, Vigor is extremely essential. I run 60 Vigor in all of my builds. That being said, other players may think that Vigor is not as important as Mind, for example. So. For them, mind is the essential stat. They put more points into mind because it lets them cast more spells and use more Ashes of War, and this usually means more damage. I am the opposite. I put more points into vigor because I value more being alive. In this case, there is no right or wrong answer. It is about what you prefer and what kind of playstyle you have. Essential stats are not primary or secondary. Their importance depends on the player. It is up to you to decide what is essential. As I mentioned at the beginning, these are the most basic concepts that a player needs to understand in order to successfully make their own build. Most players already know these, but I believe that it is important to set the groundwork for the much more complicated concepts that come throughout the process of min-maxing a build. Understanding the stats is very important, and in order to do that, having this knowledge is important. I hope that I did a good job explaining them in a simple to understand way. 
If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to ask them. I will be happy to answer everything that I can. Also, if you believe that I made a mistake somewhere, please let me know. I will be happy to make any corrections that are needed. Personally, I love making builds, and hopefully I can help other players start making their own. Everyone has cool ideas, and I would love to see how they work within the game. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope that I get to see you on the next one.